Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Brother Philip coming back to you again on Pentecostal Podcast. This week I'm going to be teaching about preaching a service called 100% UV Reflection. Yes, it's 100% UV Reflection. That's not protection. So what is a reflection? Let's start out with Telling you what a reflection is, is an image, representation, or counterpart. It's the image produced by something like a mirror or, you know, like a mirage or something. So, that's a unique title. I wanted to catch your attention. I guess I do that quite often. Um, So, you might be wondering what I'm talking about here. I'm going to be talking about 100% UV which is the sun, son of God, 100% UV reflection, reflecting the son of God, Jesus Christ. So, uh, my scripture here I'm going to start out with is from Genesis 1.26, and God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over all the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So, we see here image, but we also see likeness. What is likeness? Likeness is a representation, image, picture. It's an imitative appearance or a characteristic resemblance. So I'm going to concentrate on characteristic resemblance when I'm talking about likeness. Um, So, let's. here's uh, Genesis 1.26. Let us make man in our image, which is a reflection, after our likeness, which is a characteristic resemblance of God. Not only reflecting God with our outward appearance, but also a reflection of who God is and how God is. His personality and how God is. That's not, we need to reflect both, the inward and the outward, for God. So we're reflecting UV, which is the sun, Jesus Christ. So from Matthew 1, 21 through 23, it says, this is who the sun is. And I'm just explaining who Jesus is. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying... Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So here we see that Jesus is God with us, with a purpose to save all his people, his people and it's all of his people, because he created everyone, save everyone from their sins. So Paul tells us in reference to Jesus in Colossians 1.15, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. So we see that Jesus is the image of God. He is God. And in Colossians 2.9 it says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So we see that Jesus is God. I'm just describing who Jesus is here. So, Now that we see Jesus is God in the flesh, what are some characteristics we see from the life of Jesus that others need to see in us, that we need to reflect? So, hope to sinners. We need to be a hope to sinners. In Mark 2.17 it says, When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So that's what we have to do. We have to be reaching sinners for God. We have to be a hope and a light to them. We have to be a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. Jesus had compassion here in Matthew 14:14, 14, 14. and Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. In Mark 6:34 it says, "And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them, because they were as sheep 
not having a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. So that's our duty. Our duty is the same as Jesus' duty. You know, we got to go out and heal the sick. we got to teach them about God. Jesus had humility here in John 13, 5. After that, he poureth water into a basin, and he began to, he began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. He was God, and he could bend down and wash his disciples' feet as a symbol of something we should do. Directly after that verse, it says, Whatever example I gave you, give to others. Whatever I do, do to others. Uh, become as children. This is something also we should do. In Matthew 19, 13 through 14, it says, Then there were brought unto him little children, that he should put their hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. So when you're born of God, you become a little child. You have to learn. You have to learn spiritual um, knowledge. So you become as a little child. So we cannot rebuke people that are new, people that don't know much, to come to God. Because we were in the same position. It says, this is the kingdom of heaven. This is what the kingdom of heaven is made of. It's people learning, people growing. They have to start out little and, they, and then they eventually they learn more about God. Also about little children in Matthew 18.3, it says, And said, Verily I said, say unto you, Except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So it's pretty obvious that our mentality is to grow, is to start out. We have to start out from the very beginning again. Uh, salvation is mentioned in Luke 19.10. For the Son of Man, Jesus, is come to seek and to save that which was lost. So that was his primary purpose, was to come here to seek and save the lost. He gave himself so that we can be saved. So we gotta, we gotta tell people about salvation. We, that we have to reflect it. So I go, I could go on forever about the characteristics of Jesus Christ. You know, but we have to reflect every single one of them. Whatever we find in the life of Jesus, we have to reflect. So here's one good summary I found of Jesus in Acts 10:38. It says. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So he went about doing good. That's his, that was his purpose as well. Doing good to others. Uh, healing people, saving people, reaching out to their lives. And that's our job. That's our, that needs to be our reflection, is doing good. Do people see Jesus in you, you know? How do we reflect Jesus to others? The first one is salvation. Because you cannot reflect Jesus if you aren't saved. If you don't have Jesus for yourself, there is no way to reflect Jesus. You're lying to yourself. There is no way without the Holy Ghost, without baptism in the name of Jesus. It says in John 3, verse 3 through 5, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again of water and sea, born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So how does a person become born of water and spirit? Well, the answer is in Acts 2.38. It says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So that is being born of water and spirit. Born with water in baptism in Jesus' name. Born of the Spirit 
by getting the Holy Ghost. You start speaking in another language you don't know. So that's salvation. You need it first. Don't even attempt. There's no point. There's no point in trying to reflect Jesus if you're not saved. The second, the one of the mo main things that we can reflect Jesus with is our lifestyle. Our lifestyle is who we are as a person. How we act, what we do, when no one's around, when people are around all the time. Our lifestyle needs to always be the same. It needs to be godly all the time. Does it contain the attributes that Jesus has? Does it ple Do we please God? Do we displease God? You know, these are some things to ask yourself. Are we showing Jesus to others by our lifestyle? Are we living only for God only a little bit? Or do we live for God all the time? If you're inconsistent, then you're not living a godly lifestyle. You need to live all the time. In Romans 12.1 it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So here we see that reasonable service means required service. That's basically what reasonable means. So to live for God, you need to be a living sacrifice, holy unto God, acceptable to God. That's only starting out. You need to always grow in God. That's a required service, according to Romans 12.1. To be holy before God, we need to keep ourselves away from sins. In Hebrews 12.1, it tells us to lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Beset here means attack or surround us. So if there's sins that are attacking you and surrounding you all the time, we need to lay aside those sins and we need to turn to God and we need to grow with God. Amen. Hallelujah. So I found just two really quick summaries of what sins are in the Bible. We see the seven abominations found in Proverbs 6, 16-19. It says, These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. These are things that God despises. God absolutely hates these things. I mean, he calls these an abomination. This is a level above just hatred. God despises these things with a passion. Another quick summary is the works of the flesh in Galatians 5, 19-21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idol uh, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So here we see in Galatians that if you're doing these things, if you're living in these sins, you're not going to you're not going to go to heaven. I mean, that's as plain as I can be. And you know, we just we cannot reflect these sins. People are not going to see Jesus when we reflect these things. We're just living just like somebody else, you know? We're living like every other person. So are you perfect? Of course you aren't. <laughs> of course you aren't. If you said you were perfect, you would be lying. I'm not perfect either. I'm working on it. But our goal is to be closer to God. It's to be more like God. The more we live for God in our lives, the more we reject sins and show godly attributes to others, people will begin to see more of Jesus in us. <clears throat> Since we are to be a mere image of Jesus to others, my question is how close are you to the mirror? Now what is the mirror? What am I talking about? The mirror I'm talking about is the Bible. That is the image we have to look at to look at our lives. 
Are we following the Bible? Are we doing what it says? If you're close to the mirror, you can see all the details. Once you start backing away, you know, people can't see it. People can't see Jesus. We can only reflect Jesus to others by living a godly lifestyle according to the Bible. Like I said, the Bible is the mirror. We must look at it as an example of godly living. How much do you know the mirror? How much do you look at the mirror? Are you studying the mirror? That's just some food, some food for thought right there. If you're so far from the mirror that people can barely see Jesus, or are you so close to the mirror that they can see every aspect of Jesus? Are they excited when you talk about God? Can they see God through your lifestyle? So that's just some, some things I wanted to bring up because that's what we have to reflect. We're reflecting Jesus Christ. So in conclusion, our lives have darkness, which is sin. Darkness in the Bible is represented as sin. Uh, in them, our lives have sin in them. But we have hope because James 1.17 tells us that God has no shadow of turning. God has no shadow. God has no darkness. Shadows are created by darkness. They're created by an absence of light. 1 John 1.5 tells us that God is light. And in Him there is no darkness at all. God has no sin. There is no darkness. Our lives may have darkness. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that there was, I'm just going to say it again, that there was John 1.5 through 9. You know, He is faithful to forgive you of your sins, to get that darkness out of your life, because you got to be a mirror image of God. You have to be light to this world. The closer we are to the sun, UV, that's what I'm talking about, I'm talking about UV, the sun, Jesus Christ, the smaller our shadow is going to become. The more we're going to reflect Jesus Christ to others, so don't let your life grow a long shadow of sin by being in darkness all the time, by living in sin all the time. Let's have Jesus right over our head. If you ever notice in the middle of the day, the sun beats down right on top of you and you have a very small shadow. We need to have Jesus Christ right over our head and always in our thoughts so we can effectively show Jesus Christ to others. You know, I'm just hoping that... <clears throat> I'm really just hoping that this service touched you and I'm really hoping that you can walk away from every sin and every weight and turn away from it so you can show Jesus Christ to others. You need to be an effective witness. You need to reflect Jesus in your lifestyle. You need to reflect Jesus every single day of your life. So I just pray I blessed you today and that you know you will turn to God and you will turn away from sin. It says in the Bible, the wages of sin is death. We have to turn away. This is too close to the end of the world. We have to turn away. So, um, just check us out on Facebook. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe on YouTube. At Pentecostal Podcast, both of those. Find a local UPC church in your area. UPCI.org. Alright, God bless.